Uh, the one chapter we have not gotten to in our book that I typically get to is about quadratics. What we're going to be doing today is the last, probably most important thing that you absolutely need to finish Algebra 1 about quadratics without getting into what's called the quadratic formula. Uh, we might squeeze in at some point in the next couple weeks some information on quadratic formula, but it won't be on the final. This information is the last big idea that will be on our end of your final. We're not taking a chapter eight assessment. Chapter eight will be embedded into your final, okay? So we're gonna be looking at things like x squared plus five x plus six. And we're going to do the reverse of the box because our answer to this is going to be two binomials multiplied by each other that equal this. So we're going to use the box backwards to find it. We did a little bit of this the other day. What are what are the two terms from this trinomial that we can put that we can put into the box? X squared and six. X squared and six. What happens with these two boxes? They're combining like terms to find this. So we're, we're basically playing math detectives. What do we know must be multiplied to get x squared? It could be x squared times 1, but typically it's going to be x squared times x squared. I'm not, sorry, I just said that wrong. It's going to be x times x. And if we have x times x, we know in these parentheses they're going to go there. And then we have to start thinking about six. How do we find the six? And there's a couple of things that you're gonna be doing in your heads that I'm gonna write out here. I'd like you to write it out because in probably two years, you're gonna be looking at these notes and trying to remember what all of this meant. Basically, this box is saying some number times some number that equals six. And these two boxes as like terms are going to be the same two numbers that when I add them together, give us 5x. Why 5x? Because we're gonna get an x from this and an x from this, right? We need to put numbers in front that are gonna add up to 5x. This one's not too challenging. What numbers do you guys think? Three and two. Does it matter which order? No. no. I'm gonna put the three up here and the two over here. So we're saying three times two equals this six, and three plus two equals this five, and when we multiply these in these boxes, we're getting our x attached to them. That means our binomials are x plus three, and x plus 2. What did I do wrong? You put two Oh, thanks, 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 thanks. I never said I was perfect. Okay, sometimes this center term might have a different exponent than just the invisible one, and sometimes this front term might, eh, I don't want to do it that way. Let's make this really simple. Well, look, never mind, ignore I said that. Let's do 2y squared plus 9y plus 4y. And I'm not sure if that'll work. I'm making this up from something. Um, no, cross it off. This is me trying to make stuff up and it doesn't work. Let me find one that will. No, you exit out there. You're just wasting approximately 
Okay, here's one that'll work. Sorry about my messiness and I'm writing in pen. All right, um, x squared minus 13x, we did this one the other day, I think, plus 40. But we didn't do it in our notes. <clears throat> When I look at this trinomial, I know the first term and the last term can go into these boxes in my box, right? Uh -huh. So I get x squared and 40. And this is going to equal a binomial and a binomial that we're going to figure out by figuring out what times what is going to give us 40 that the same two numbers added together would give us negative 13. I know. I know. Actually, I do. There's a hint when there's a negative in the middle and a positive at the end. If I'm dealing with negatives and I'm multiplying and I end with a positive, both of them have to be negative. Both of them have to be negative. So whatever we get here, the x is going to have a minus for both of these. And so that means I know that this is a negative number and a negative number. And what are they? Hmm? Eight, 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 eight and five. All yes or if I multiply negative eight times negative five, do I get positive 40? Yes. yes. And negative eight x and negative five x give us the negative 13 x. You erase the We're going to do one more example, and then we're going to write up a set of little rules that are going to help you recognize the positives and the negatives give you hints about what those numbers are probably going to be. If I have x squared minus 8x minus 20. We know the x squared goes here, which gives us x and x, yes? What's going to go down here? Negative 20. That means one of this has to be negative and the other has to be positive. And you can do, actually, yeah. Wait, I got it. Go ahead. Negative 10 and positive 2. It has to be negative 10 and not negative 2 because. It would equal positive 8 if we had a, a positive 10, and we needed to equal a negative 8. So the negative has to be 10, and the positive has to be 2 to get us to that negative 8. So that means that this equals x minus 10 times x plus 2. How many of you have a blank left side of your page next to this? I don't. Uh, Okay. If you don't do it on the back, but I'd prefer it if it was next to it. Okay. If I have x squared, let's go ahead and write ax squared plus by plus c. Ax squared plus by plus c. When I make my square, everything here is going to be positive because these two added together are going to be positive and these two multiplied together are going to be positive. So if there's a plus here and a plus here, everything is positive. <laughs> okay. 
If I have AX squared, and sometimes this A is an invisible one, which is what we've been dealing with so far. In a minute, we're gonna do some examples where there's a number here, and that changes it a little bit. But it doesn't change the rules about the positives and negatives. If I have AX squared um, minus BY plus C, think about what that means for the square. Both are going to be negative so that I can get a positive here and negatives here. So if this is negative and this is positive, both are going to be negative. And finally, if I have AX squared minus BY minus C. One is negative, one is positive. You end up with one of each. One is negative and one is positive. And the negative is going to be further from zero. Think about the example we just did where it was negative 10 and positive 2. If you end up with a negative here, it was the number that was furthest from zero, and that's why this is still negative. And I feel like in this one, the negative wins. <coughs> That's because it's further from zero. What do I mean that it wins? It shows up here. It shows up because, like our last example, negative 10 plus 2 gives us negative 8. The negative shows up in the answer. Okay? But our parentheses would show x minus some number and x plus some number. Does that make sense? So when you look at these, these symbols here give you some hints. Okay, we're going to move into, I think we may not have time for the half sheet foldable, and I think that's okay. I'd like you to have this one, the factoring quadratics. It's the one that folds in half. That's pretty cool. This might be the last notes I have you fold into your notebooks. Isn't that weird? Yeah. It is weird, Vegeta. Okay, let's look at the directions. It says, check, just actually, I'm going to pause this and make this 